Hi and welcome back for the video on SQL stored procedures and the entity framework where we may actually set a record for the shortest video because the way EF6 deals with stored procedures is just brilliant and really easy to explain. So let's dive right into it. Um, if you don't have the source code project I have a video up now about how to get the source code project so just look in the entity framework play, uh, playlist and it's the first video so go watch that first I haven't made any changes to databases no changes to source code because this was all already on that uh, project that you downloaded then we're just gonna go over it if we look at the server explorer and the data connections we'll see one that's just a file the customers.mdf right and that's the one we're gonna expand because we can look at its properties and see that it's actually the local DB and it's the uh, the one that is right here this is actually it so it's the one that we're dealing with and we see that there's a stored procedure in it named select clients if I open it you'll see the store procedure is very simple uh, it's got a little join action in it, a little sort action in it didn't want to make it overly simple but didn't want to make it just nutty crazy uh, hard either so basically what we're doing is we're selecting from our customer tables and, and joining to our purchase tables various data on their purchases and then you send how you want to order it pretty easy and you can tinker with this it's in the source code uh, change it how you like but make sure you update your model if you do Speaking of that, anytime you add or do anything to your database, remember always will come over here, right click, and update your model from the database. And that's going to bring up a window. If you added something, there would obviously be something here to add, which we don't have anything. It's just diagrams, it's just a diagram. Uh, we don't care about any of that. And then the DBO, we'll see here, these are all just dealing with the diagrams too, so we don't care about any of that. Uh, we could obviously refresh store procedures and all of that, and it doesn't hurt to do that. Uh, go ahead and finish make sure our model is up to date and then it's talking about store procedure average purchase or ignore it we don't care because it works it's just a warning alright so we come back over here to our form and we remember that this store procedure if we go over here to our EDMX file and we go to our browser on our model we can go over here to the store remember I told you that's where you can find them find the store procedure make sure that it's listed which it is it also shows you that it selects an in care order by parameter so we can send it a string and something interesting uh, that a lot of people don't know is you can come up here actually if you want to look at its return type the return type is actually a complex type which is here select clients underscore result and if you come in here and expand it we can actually see the columns that are coming back from that store procedure it's kinda cool I hear in 13 I don't know this but I hear in 13 you can actually do model browse and all of that stuff uh, we're obviously not going to mess with it but it's interesting nonetheless alright so we're gonna close this and we did update our model so we'll save it so how do we work with it well it's really easy because now that we've updated our model we've got the store procedure it's in our store uh, we have access to it uh, via IntelliSense otherwise in the old days called IntelliCrash but it works much better now um, I have a select sort type and all this has is if you look at the drop down list it's got the collection and the items those were the if you looked at the case statement in the uh, if you looked at the case statement in the store procedure the types that came down were these three types that you could sort by in the case statement so they're there for you to select and then the execute when you double click it this is where the code is you'll notice I've cleaned some stuff up where I'm doing using statements and all of that uh, we create our context we create our query we're the context if we actually if I backspace here for you you'll see that the select clients is actually 
a function right there. And it even tells you that it takes a string order by. So that is really neat. And I just send it whatever you selected in the order box to string. Now, in production, we'd probably check to see that you did select something. And if you didn't, show the user some kind of error. But for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, that's just fine. And then we're going to create our buffer and then append to that buffer so-and-so purchased what and on what date. That's it, people. That's how easy it is to use a stored procedure with Entity Framework. Nothing else to it. So let's watch it work. We're going to tell it first that we want to sort by customer. So remember the store procedure took a parameter for the case statement. And we want to sort by, uh, I don't care about customer ID, let's do amount, something cool. And now we're going to execute and it should show us a window. Gives us the customers and notice that they repeat and you say, oh, well, why are some of them in there twice? Well, if you'll remember, we're doing a join, right? So for each row in the purchases table, it's going to pull also the customer as well. So Julie Moore is being in here twice and Tom Thumb being in here twice makes sense. And you'll see that they are sorted ascending by the amount of their purchases. Sort my date won't do any good because I put the same date in manually. I can say OK. And just to show you that it is working, let's switch to customer's ID. So group it by customer. And it's fast. And that's it. That's how you use a stored procedure with the Entity Framework. How did we do it? Quick recap. We had the stored procedure in our uh, database. We updated our model, our EDMX file. Update the model. Save the changes. Check the store. Make sure it's there. Make sure the return, the parameter list is right. Usually it's a complex type that comes back. Make sure that the columns that come back uh, make sense. Now there can be problems if you selected, let's say, the ID column uh, twice. The uh, customer ID, let's say your primary key is always called ID. And you've got customer with ID and purchases with ID. Uh, it will create an ID 1 column, and sometimes that can cause big problems. Uh, so look carefully at the way that your queries are written. You can go in there, if you remember, I select it as another name and give it an alias. Uh, I, I would recommend that uh, because Entity Framework, I have seen where if you select two of the same column names from different tables, it has problems translating uh, in the complex type result. So just check your queries. It's a good practice anyway. So hopefully this helped. The source code's available. Like now there's a whole video dedicated on how to get it. So go grab the source code, tinker with it, and join. If you please remember to subscribe. And if you have any questions, send me a message. I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Thanks a lot.